I will say, yes, I was, I was horrible, Mm -hmm. but she is cruel. She's manipulative. She is, she's one of the coldest people I've ever met. Cold, cold. And that's all I'm going to say about her. Well, Ashley, it is so great to catch up with you. I know it's been a little while and life has changed dramatically since the show. Married, you know, uh, baby, everything. So tell me, what does life look like for you right now? Oh my gosh, I am a stay-at-home mom. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> Once I had the baby, I maternity leave was too short. And I, I said to my husband, I said, is there anything that we could try to do to try to keep me home for a little longer? Because these moments are so precious and you don't get them back. And for me um, to have a career as a registered nurse, My job is always going to be there. They're always going to need me. But these little moments with my baby aren't. So um, for his first year of life, he turns one next next month. um, I've been at home with him. So it's been wonderful. So I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't think I need to say anything else. (laughs) It's so wonderful. I mean, I've been working from home and my son is right around the same age, uh, 13 months. So, um, you know, it's so nice to have these special moments. And I mean, what, how would you describe yourself as a mom? Is there anything that, that surprised you, that challenged you during this first year? Oh my gosh, thank you for asking all these fun questions. I was like ready for Southern Charm. I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> hold on. Um, yes, that I, that I wasn't ready to go back to work, that I just wanted to be with him, that I was jealous of the caregivers, you know, that would get to be with my baby. I just, I love my baby so much. Um, no, I, 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 it's just, I think being a family and, and seeing my husband as a father is so incredible. And to think where my life has been, what I've done, and to think that now this is it, and maybe I should have done this a lot sooner <laughs> instead of going, instead of making some of the decisions, maybe I should have done this a lot sooner because I really enjoy it. So yeah. then again, I don't think you get to enjoy it the same way if you, you know, hadn't done everything and I, I guess I have no regrets. So are you itching to have another one already now that you're Uh, almost a year out? Yeah. Yes. More so because I'm pushing 40. (laughs) So and I'm like, oh my gosh, but that clock that clock is ticking. And also, as you know, the amount of crap, the amount of baby crap, okay, that you that we have, the swings, the high chairs, the car seats, the strollers, the bouncers. I don't want to give it up because if I have another baby, I don't want to get it, but there's no space for there's any no of this, space. right? So it's just, there's so much crap. So I'm like, I almost want to have that baby soon so we can then use it and get rid of it. Yes. No, right? I totally, I totally feel you. Cause I had my daughter and then I had my son like two, uh, two years later. And as soon as like, you know, we, we decided that we're done. I'm like, get everything out of here. I need the space back. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And you also hold on to their clothes because you're like, if I have another one, if it's the okay. same, you know, gender, then I want to, you know, where some of these clothes don't have tags on them. So, so true. <laughs> and they go through them so fast and there's so many cute outfits. I'm like, I never even put you in that. You know, you wear the same white shirt the whole time. So. <laughs> exactly. You buy but all these clothes and they end up wearing the same thing over and over I again. Know. It's so I funny. And then, and then being a, a mom later in life, a lot of my friends have already had kids. My sister had so then they give you their things Mm -hmm. so it's like there's so much stuff so there's just so much stuff but yeah yeah, it's great and I love being pregnant I loved it so it was amazing except for one thing I have to say is when you're pregnant and it's your first one you know you get to rest and you get to just keep your kick your feet up and I, I just keep thinking how do you do this with when you're chasing a little toddler how do you do it it's hard. It's hard. You 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 don't have that time to nap anymore. Nah, and then, no. And then wait till the second one comes and you're like, I really have no time to ever sit down. And that's what impresses me because they're like, don't carry anything heavy when you're pregnant over this. And then you see moms with bellies carrying their toddlers and the swing and this. You know, I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, I don't even know if I could do it again, but. Super mom, super mom. Oh. How, what were those, you know, I know for me after I had my first those first few months after pregnancy were so, or uh, first few months after birth were so difficult for me. Like just trying to navigate life as a new mom, like this new person that I have to keep alive. I mean, what was that time like for you? I know. Thank you. This is so sweet. I love these questions. I'm like, 
trying to go back. Well, I had a C-section, so, you know, that required me to, you know, kind of try to take it easy a, a little bit more, which was so hard for me. My husband was so amazing. He would snap at me if he saw me trying to walk up the stairs. And I'm like, but I... <laughs> I have to get to the kitchen or we have a weird layout and my kitchen's upstairs. I'm like, this is a nightmare. But I think the hormones were so hard. You know, I was definitely more emotional and everything was very sentimental. And I just, I cried a lot more easily and I'm already an emotional person. So that was interesting. But I think what, I think honestly, what was hard was knowing that I was going to have to go back to work in a few months. And that's kind of what broke my heart is I treasured every moment that I had with my baby and, and to think that, you know, I'm going to be having to send him to, you know, daycare or have a nanny and I'm not going to get these moments. That's probably what break, broke my heart. And so I was like looking at the calendar, like, okay, two, you know, three more weeks, two more. And I was doing that and I was like getting so sad. And then that's when I, you know, I was able to sit down with my husband and say, I just, I'm not ready. And so after that, everything kind of changed. I just really appreciated you know, those moments that I got them. So I didn't take them for granted, let's just Definitely, say. No, so. that's so special that you were able to yeah. at that time. And it's a whole bigger yes. conversation about the maternity yes. leave in this country. I, it's, it's, I it's know, insane. I know, it's I know. Terrible. Luckily I got paid for the mm -hmm. amount of time that I did. A lot of, you have to work for an employer that hire, that employs so many people to be able to get paid, paid family leave and all these crazy things. And I was so lucky to at least get four months. I got yeah. four months, That's so nice. and nice. then and then I said, okay, I'm not ready to come back. I know they're all very understanding. So I want to miss those special moments. I totally get it. Yeah. You know, but I now I am a little. Now I'm a little itching to like maybe do a shift here and there. Yeah, no, well, that's <laughs> like I mean, a year out, you finally feel like yourself again. And you're like, all right, I can yes. do this. I can leave him for yes. a little while and go do something for myself. Yes. And also just to kind of like exercise my brain, you know, because yes. you're, you know, mommy mode. I'm like, gosh, I'm like, I'm already forgetting like what, to, you know, like how to start an IV. I'm like, am I going to remember how to do that? I need to get back in there. So. <laughs> I'm sure you'll pick it right back up. Yeah. Um, I believe a few years back, you said in an interview that you were hoping that your future husband wouldn't watch Southern Charm. So did he? <laughs> no. It is, it's so bad because now that it's, it's on, you know, they, they played the episodes like leading up to it. And when we're like flipping through, okay, my husband's favorite show with me, we watch Below Deck. Okay. So we do, you know, have Bravo on at times. Okay. And there have been times he's turned on the TV and it's on and I'm like, no, 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 please, please. Like, Babe, I really don't like, and I start to blame it. I mean, I'm like, babe, I really, I just really don't want to see this. It's really going to put me in a bad mood, please. And he's like, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I just, my heart starts racing. I just don't want him to see me like that, you know? Does it feel I, like a whole like different lifetime ago? It, like you almost feel like a different person? It does. And also like, it's also like him watching me with an ex, you know, with a right. previous boyfriend. So that is awkward, you know, <laughs> in of itself, right? Yeah, that and, is and, true. and Thomas of all of the people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want him to be like, what were you thinking? You know? So, um, yeah. So I, I, I start to, my heart starts to race. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, you know, I, when I spoke to Landon recently, she talked a lot about how the show kind of affected her mental health a little bit once she left and how, you know, it was kind of hard for her to deal with certain things, especially the backlash on social media. Did you feel that way as well? And what was your mental health like coming off the show? So funny thing is I was just hanging out with Landon all weekend. My, you know, my husband, my, my husband loves her too. So, um, she, she is the most wonderful human being. And so we were together on Saturday and Sunday. We went and saw a concert together and we both, you know, we had a couple of drinks and we're both like, Landon, what are your messages? What are your comments? Every time you turn on, you know, your Instagram, it'll say like little bubbles, like, you know, there's a comment and I'm thinking, well, I haven't posted anything. So, you know, and I get a little scared to turn it on because I don't want to see, you know, the mean messages, like, because sometimes it, it, for a second, it makes me, it, I feel down. I get a little down. And so it changes my, my mood for momentarily. And Landon goes, I know she goes, Ashley, it's the worst when Southern charm is on because people then, mm -hmm. you know, think, Oh, I wonder what Landon's doing. I wonder what Ashley's up to. So they go to your Instagram just to write something mean or negative. So, right. so we, we both, we have each other to kind of, um, to, to, we can relate to each other, but also, you know, as a sounding board and, um, and we can also laugh about it because we're going through it together and there's no one else that knows 
that, it's, who's been through that. Yeah. So I'm lucky to have her for that reason. So, and we laugh and she's like, Ashley, ignore it. And I'm like, I know, but when they're, you know, making fun of my baby or my husband or, and then they also go to my husband's page and write oh, negative really? things. Yes. That's great. Well, that's insane that they like make comments about your baby and your family. Like that's, yeah. you know, it's like, that's where it kind of crosses the line. Well, it's, it's, it's more like poor baby, you know, sad for that. Yeah. It's it's more things like that. Like I feel sad for that child and to have a mother like you and I'll get a ton of egg donor comments. That one doesn't really bother me, but it's <laughs> like, okay, I'll, I'll take it. Right. But like, you know, poor child or your poor husband or, you know, I'm like, oh God. Oh my God. So it's actually poor me. Okay. Right, right. I, I, well, I know you said, I think believe. I think you said in an interview that you had some trauma after the show. I mean, what was that like and how did you kind of get out of that place? Oh my gosh, it's, it's probably taken about three years to finally feel in a good place, you know, mentally. Um, you know, everyone says you kind of have to be removed from the situation to, to kind of have that clarity. But it was each year I was like, oh, I feel, you know, I, I feel so much better. And then each year that goes by, I have more and more clarity and it's more so clarity where I'm like, I'm more mad at myself, you know, for putting myself in that, you know, that position. Um, but in terms of, yeah, mental health, sometimes now that the show's back on it, it brings it back up and you see these comments and you just, you get angry. I get angry with myself, I guess. I beat, I, I'm hard on myself and, um, you know, I say I regrets, but then again, it's 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 gotten me to where I'm I'm at today, and I don't think that my husband would have fallen in love with the woman, you know, that he is if it, if if I didn't go through that. But to be honest with you, with my mental health, um, I definitely take medication. I have since since the show um, months um, a couple two months before the show first premiered in 2018. I was so anxious about it. I was so worried about it that I just started losing weight, stressed, and I thought I was just in very, so much anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I started taking medication and to this day, I'm still on it because, you know, it's like, I'm a, it's working and, and it helps me. And I'm like, why stop, you know? Cause I'm, yeah. yes. And it was the only challenge with it was like, you know, once you get pregnant and then breastfeeding, you know, you kind of had to work with your doctors to try to find, you know, the right, the right thing for you because it, it's, you know, can harm the baby. Um, but I'm still, I'm still happy to say that I'm on it and it keeps me, um, you know, just kind of level headed. No, and, definitely. Um, whatever works and whatever makes you yes. feel better. No, that's yes. totally true less controlling. Sometimes I want to control situations. And so it, it, it helps me. Yeah. Helps me not keep my thoughts. Cause at night I can just lay there and thinking, and especially since the show, I lay there after, you know, I might watch something and it just disturbs me so much that like it gets to me. It's yeah. crazy. Do you it's, go back and have you watched back any of your time on the show? Do you ever watch it? Or, and are you watching the current season at all? No, I don't like to watch the seasons back of me. No, yeah. absolutely not. I don't, that's, that's really hard, you know? Um, but am I watching the new season? Yes, I am, I am, yes. It, first of all, when you record Southern Charter automatically in your DVR, right, it sets and I'm like, oh, it's on, okay. Um, and I do, my husband will sit there and, you know, I will force him to watch it. And, you know, sometimes I have to fast forward through scenes because they're that boring. Actually, a lot of the scenes are that boring and I want my husband to, you know, I want my husband's attention. So I skip through, you know, the Austin parts and the Naomi parts and the shop parts and some of the new girl parts. <laughs> Wait, so what, are, what parts are you watching then? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably my, my, my enemy, probably my worst enemy, maybe her parts to see, you know, what, yeah. what's going on there, you know? It, We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, you mentioned Naomi. What was your reaction when you heard that she was uh, returning? Because I know you had some thoughts when she, Cameron, and Chelsea decided to leave the show. So what was your thoughts on her returning to the show? Well, I, I love Cameron. I And I respect Cameron and Chelsea so much for that decision, for their mental health. Yeah. I respect them so much. When they lost Cameron, they lost the show. The show, first of all, the narration in the beginning. Do you, do you watch the show? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a narrator in the beginning. Cameron, I mean, was incredible, right? Naomi, what the heck? If that's the best that they can find, just 
Okay, go through the name, all the voices on the show. Well, Catherine, forget about it. That's the worst voice ever. <laughs> Jeff, oh, Craig, Horp, just go through the names. They're terrible. The best one they could find was Naomi. The, if that's the best that they can find, it's, first of all, I want to like help her. I want to coach her in like how to lose, a, use a little bit more, you know, to emphasize words, to use a little bit more excitement. Mm -hmm. I want to teach her how to do a good voiceover. She's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> It's terrible. So right there, it's lost me. It's okay. just gone downhill. It's yeah. terrible. So um, what do I think of her? I don't even have anything to say. She's probably the she's probably the worst, one of the worst people I've ever met. So I would rather have lunch with Catherine than with Naomi. Let's just say that. Why why is she still like number one list on your list of like the worst people ever? She's she's mean. Yeah. And I know people are gonna say, Well, you're mean, Ashley. Yeah, I was mean on the show. I will I will say yes. I was I was horrible, mm -hmm. but she is cruel. She's manipulative. She is. She's one of the coldest people I've ever met. Cold, cold, and that's all I'm gonna say about her. Yeah, I would. She's mean. She's cruel, and she's just cold. What was your thoughts on her hooking up with Craig again? Um, I was like, Craig, what are you thinking? You know, I, I honestly, I didn't, I, I, when I saw her, I just, it's, it's so boring to me. I can't even watch. I can't even watch. To me, it just seemed, it was just, it's um, very manufactured. You know, it just, it was boring. I was just like, can't get a little bit more, you know, creative with it. I had, I had nothing to say about it. It was fast forward. Do you ever regret going to that lunch with her? Cause I know that she said that she regretted going to the lunch with you. Well, first of all, there was something going on where she couldn't go on a trip. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that she had to say, say, stay back. And yeah. obviously I wasn't on this trip. So if she wanted film time, she knew she had to do this with me. If I wanted film time, I knew I had to do this with her. Right. So we had no other options mm -hmm. um, to do that. So, and that was very much set up. So I love the part where, I don't know if it, they'll probably cut this, but like when I'm calling her to ask her to lunch, I'm already in the parking lot outside the place with the producer sitting right next to me. So. <laughs> Let's just let's just be real. You know, it was we both didn't want to do it. But I also thought maybe maybe I can tug, maybe I can tug at a heartstring. Maybe maybe she can show some real human, some more warmth. And I thought this could change my mind. And nah, it was exactly what I expected. I hope for the best. But I thought maybe this could be good, but no expectations. Wow. When's the last time you uh, spoke to her? Was it the last time you filmed? Then, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What do you think about her interactions with Catherine this season? Do you feel like she's still kind of tiptoeing around her? Well, she never liked Catherine, right? So mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing. When when they they all jumped on the camp Catherine bandwagon because that's what was popular to do at the time. So they weren't they weren't you know stupid. They knew if they jumped on my bandwagon or they agreed with me that they would get so much hate and so much backlash. So she's never liked Catherine. So that's, that's, and Catherine always needs someone to go at, you know, if it's not me, it's Landon, it's Thomas, this time it's Naomi. Right. Mm -hmm. So that she needs, you know, Catherine needs someone. Yeah. Some Catherine needs someone, an enemy. Um, but with Naomi, um, no, she never was a fan of Catherine. No. So. I, I know that you have publicly apologized for the, some of the things that you said to Catherine in the past. Did she ever accept that apology? And no. if, if you ever saw her, what would you say to her? You know, I think if I met Catherine outside of this, just bumping into her at a bar or something without having dated you know, Thomas, I'm sure we would probably, you know, laugh. Mm -hmm. And she's, I think Catherine is quirky and she's silly. I think. I think she would be cool in that sort of scene outside of the show. Um, listen, what? I don't think she would ever accept my apology. I think what I did was I was horrible. Mm -hmm. I was psycho. I was cruel. I was. I was honest. <laughs> but I should never have said those things. Yeah. I should never have spoken to her that way. In reality, if it weren't 
if Thomas was no not in this picture, if Thomas did not have custody of those children, those children would be in foster care. That's the truth. They would be in foster care without Thomas. If Thomas was gone, those children would be in foster care. But it was never my place to say those things and talk to her in the way that I did. And I regret that so much. I just, I regret that. Cause I'm sure had I not said what I said, I'm sure Catherine and I would have been cool. Yeah. Are, is, that, is that some of those things that like gave you anxiety after the show and like kind of kept you up at night? Like you said. I just, I beat myself up mm -hmm. over it. You know, I, I think people have to realize in these settings when there's producers that want you to have these conversations, they, they forced me to have these conversations with her. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they forced me to say what I said. Yeah. I said what I said on my own, but they want, they make you talk to them. You need, they set it up so that you talk to them. And I think had it not been for that, the producers really, to me, one of the things that I said, it was just pure adrenaline. It's just, it's outer body. When I look at that, I almost don't remember saying those things because I sh was shaking. I'm shaking now. I don't like to do this in front of, I don't like to do things knowing that so many people are gonna watch. I get really nervous and I stutter and I, my heart races and I even, even, you know, my work knows they're like, you need to take public speaking classes because you, <laughs> you're so, you sound you're great. Not, you sound totally you're not good at how you speak and how you go across. And I just look at me, I'm crazy. You know, this is my energy level, but, um, you know, the things that I said, I think truly I was privy to too much information. Mm -hmm. I witnessed too much that no one will ever see, mm -hmm. um, the show. Well, the show knows, you know, some things. And that's what's kind of sad. I feel like they exploit her, okay? But what I witnessed with my own eyes is, was sad. Mm -hmm. was very sad behind the scenes. And the audience will never know these things unless it becomes public. And she's certainly not going to talk about it. No. So I knew too much. And, and there were buttons and triggers that she was pushing that you guys don't see either. Right. You guys didn't see that. Those things seem to be cut. You know, or if I said nice things to her about her, things that I thought were gonna make it never made it. And I'm like, why didn't you show the more empathetic side? Why didn't you show the side where I was reaching? Because I, that was my narrative was I was, I was the villain. The villain. I was the yeah. bad guy. Mm -hmm. So no. you're not gonna see that. But I still, I was, I was terrible. Yeah. I cringe, I cringe. And I'm mad at myself because I didn't need to do that to make her look bad. She could have done that on her own. Had I just shut my effing mouth and it makes me so mad because she's already doing it to herself now on TV, right? She didn't need me to look bad, make her look bad. And someone said to me, Ashley, you never make yourself look good by making someone else look bad. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. And I thought I could try to show her is who the person she really is. First of all, who am I to do that? Mm -hmm. Who am I to do that? I'm not God. I'm not, I, that's not, that's not my job to do that. But I came out swinging and it ended up hurting me and making me look like a monster, horrible, evil. And I regret that because that's not who I am. Right. You know, when I spoke to Landon, she said that um, it was a hundred percent true that, you know, Catherine kind of pushed out her pushed out Cameron, um, you know, pushed out Chelsea. Do you feel like that is true as well? Like she kind of pushed these people out of the show? Yeah, well, Catherine doesn't have friends. You know, it, she never has had friends. They're TV friends, but they, for the first time season five, which I was in, was the best season ever and will be the only good season ever. Um, and it was the only season that sort of portrayed her in a good light. And that will be Catherine's best season. And everyone keeps saying, what happened to the Catherine season five? I'm like, well, she's always been the same Catherine. There's just not someone as evil as me to make her look good. Okay. Seriously, that's Catherine's always, she's never been sober. She's never been any of those things. It was just the way she was portrayed that season because they wanted to give her her comeback season. She's always been the same person. 
but I looked so bad that it made Cameron, Patricia, that have always despised her and thought she was horrible, it actually made them side with her, which tells you how bad was I that people that just thought she's the worst human being actually sided with her. Or did they side with her because they wanted the jump on the bandwagon because that was a popular thing to do, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. No, it, it was, you know, it, it was definitely, look at, they got more followers, they got more likes, they, they sided with her and everyone loved them. Yes, you finally are, you know, you finally are friends with Catherine, you're finally inviting her to parties, you're finally siding with her. Look, it, it was a great season for that mm -hmm. reason. But yeah, she pushed those people out. So Catherine doesn't think about anything ahead. It's everything is in the moment. And even with the kids, everything is in this moment. And I think with her friends, I don't think she's thinking that far ahead. It's so with, with Cameron. Yeah, that was, if that's true, that she was going to spread a rumor of, I believe she was going to do that because Catherine doesn't care. That's why she doesn't have friends. It's yeah. about her. Have you heard from Thomas at all? Did he congratulate you on the baby? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah because of social media, you, you see what's going on in each other's lives. And I see what he's, you know, what's going on with his children and his new house. So, you know, I'll, I'll you know, you can send like a little emoji or like something and, and uh, you know, he'll say congrats and, and um, yeah, he reaches out, you know, every, every now and again, and he'll laugh and he'll go like, you did it. You did the married life, the, you know, the, the road less traveled. Like he, he kind of laughs at me. He plays with me. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. When and why did you and Thomas kind of call it off for good? Oh my God, it was so gnarly what was going on with the custody battle. And it was right in 2019. And after the worst year, you know, for how we were both portrayed on TV and then Thomas with this, you know, sexual assault, these charges, it was just so crazy. And I was actually getting, um, putting some, we found a tracker on my car oh. and they were in such a nasty legal battle that they were trying to catch each other. He has PI, she had PIs and they have a, um, it's a custody, it was a custody agreement that you can't have a um, girlfriend, um, a paramour, as it says, under the same roof as the kids. You can't sleep over unless you're married. And I feel like that's what Catherine was trying, or her lawyers were trying to get me on was that I was, you know, staying at his house or when the kids were there because he had some custody. So they were sick truckers. And I'm like, this is nuts. Like, this is this what it what am I doing? Like with my life, Ashley. This is pathetic. Like, why are you involved? Like, this is sad. And I just thought, what am I, what am I doing with my life here? So um, you know, we both agreed for the purpose of, you know, him trying to um, deal with this custody without me in the picture. And the right thing for me to do was leave, mm -hmm. was to get, was to go back home and center myself and be around my family and my friends and, you know, and to get to a place where I could get healthy. Cause I wasn't, I was, you know, I lost like 30 pounds and wow. Yeah, I was not doing well mentally. Right. And Wait, um, so, sorry, it was ahead. a good thing. Yeah, between him and I it was it was he's like, you know, I think you should go back. And I'm and I'm like, I have your support. And he's like, listen, I will help you get all your stuff, your car, your belongings. And he goes, This this is, you know, this will be a good thing just till the dust settles, you know, mm -hmm. with the cussy. But I knew in my heart I wasn't going back yeah. when I left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was it was very amicable. Okay. Yeah. Did, yeah. So wait, it was Catherine that put the tracker on your car or somebody that like worked with her? Oh, I'm yes. Yes. Attorneys, PIs. I, I don't know, but there Etsy. were two. It yeah. was two. Yeah. Under the, under the hood. And then we had to call Thomas had a PI too, and he had to come remove it. And he's like, Oh, this belongs to this guy, this PI. And I'm like, this is insane. Where like, is this normal? Like, what, what am I doing? I know Cam said, I think on one of the reunions that your relationship with Thomas was a volatile relationship. Is that how you would still describe it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thomas, Thomas was, you know, was not insecure with a lot of things. And I think he always thought that women were, it's funny. You would think that I would be insecure that he was stepping out on me or with another woman, but it was actually the opposite. He was 
he was very faithful. He was more like, you're gonna, you know, you're talking to this guy, you're seeing this guy, you are flirting with that guy. He was very, you know, jealous. And so that made him volatile. I think as an older man, maybe he thought like, you know, she's only with me for these things and she wants me young. I don't know what it was, but there were times that he was just, it was really hard. And um, I hate to say it, but it's like, there are times I can see how it made Catherine crazy. Yeah. You know, that. and those were things that I was like, God, we can kind of relate. But she's, but I think that you see her pattern with talks, you know, how she is in relationships too. She's not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. <sighs> but um, yeah, there were times I was like, you know what? I wish I could talk to Catherine about this. You know, I, I wish I could have. I wish I could talk to one of his exes about about this because I'm like, am I going? Am I the one who's crazy or is he crazy? Or like, I don't know. I need to talk to someone else that maybe went through it and we're like, oh, okay, like you've been through this too. It's not just me. But uh, I I can just imagine I was what 34, 35 as a 21 year old girl. Like it was hard for me in my 30s, and I had some time on her. So I I can't imagine it 21, but. Yeah. Um, Definitely yeah. a lot, a lot to deal I, with. Yeah. That's where I sort of, you know, empathize, you know, with her. Um, but I think what, you know, I think what people didn't really tell me was like, it wasn't like she was like crazy. Like she wasn't like crazy. Like people were like, oh, Ashley's crazy. It was like, she was like, it's more of like a mental mm -hmm. illness, sickness type of thing where I saw that if you're not all well there, that relationship definitely wasn't going to. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Garibaldi, the host of Us Weekly Celebrity Coverage. Don't forget to hit subscribe for the latest celebrity news, tips, and video. And for much more content, make sure you head on over to usmagazine.com, the official home of Us Weekly Magazine.